Welcome to a very special interview. I want to introduce you to someone who's just a new friend to me. And of course he's a friend because he plays football and he used to be a professional footballer. So what I want to do is introduce you to Lee Payne. Lee, tell us a little bit about yourself, but tell us a little bit about the history as a professional footballer. Well, I'm a, I'm a Luton lad, Howard. I was born in Luton. No. Yeah, <laughs> Luton. Something good got to come out of Luton, yeah. you know. And um, that was where I learned my football trade at Luton. They were in the first division then, back in the day. Uh, David Pleat was a manager who went on to manage Tottenham. So it was a good apprenticeship. It was a good learning process for me there. And... Um, so how long ago was that, last week? That was, for I wish, <laughs> 1984, yeah, 1983. Yeah. yeah, 1983. And um, it was a dream since I was a little boy. You know, I wanted to be a professional footballer. Who doesn't? Uh, exactly, we all do. And, and that, that's why I was extremely blessed to, you know, for it to happen to me. You know, I, I didn't think I was anything special. It was just, I just f felt really comfortable playing football. And, um, and like I say, I, I did an apprenticeship at Luton and... Uh, had to go through a bit of rejection. They, they didn't offer me a professional contract. So I had a couple of years in non-league, which was probably the, the most enjoyable time of my football career. Why was that? Just Got because, more game time? yeah, and, and more game time and the pressure's off a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's professional football. You're, you know, it's very intense and the competition for 11 places is every, every week. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, you got to remember there's sometimes 25 pros fighting for 11 places yeah you know so um going non-league you know you found the banter was different and a bit more relaxed and there, you you i was only 17 i was playing with men you know and, and it toughened me up um and uh but I, w I was i never give my dream up howard you know and i went from i went from non-league to back to the premier league which was which was then called the Barclays League Division One because it hadn't mm -hmm. gone to the Premier at that stage. It was 1988, but to to join a big club like Newcastle United uh, in that period was was a was a dream come true for me. Mm. You know. Now you made a, a good friend with somebody in particular because uh, you you've got a connection to Brazil, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Well, um, it just so happened that when I signed for Newcastle, the big star at that time was a, a player called Mirandinha who um, he'd actually scored against England um, at Wembley for Brazil. Um, and uh, Newcastle and United audaciously made this little sneaky bid for a Brazilian. They were the first club in England to sign a Brazilian and they managed to get him from Palmeiras. And he came, you imagine him arriving in Tyneside, it was amazing. Boy unconfined, as Gascoigne's cheeky chip found Mirandina free and the boy from Brazil opened his St James's Park account. It was a magic moment he just had to share with a man who suffered so much this past week. Mirandinha bangs it in. It might not come to that if Mirandinha can keep his goal scoring touch. In imperiously. Robola has lost it. Mirandinha's in here. A disaster for Bruce Grubbala, a triumph for Mirandinha. He was incredible um, talent, incredible training with him every day. And I'd sit with him on the bus and pick his brains, you know, because he played with some of the greats, you know, and um, he was uh, an inspirational player. And we always kept in touch. And I ended up later on in life going out to Brazil, which was life changing, which I'm sure we'll talk about in many ways. Um, well, do tell us now, because the thing is, mm. uh, I'm going to give the game away a little bit here, yeah. because you, you, you're now a born-again Christian. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And we'll come to know yeah. more about that yeah. in terms of how it affected you, uh, in the, especially behind the scenes, uh, say, yeah. in the dressing room at Newcastle, yeah. to, say, the dressing room in Brazil, where there's so many Christians, right? That's right, yeah. Well, the funny thing was, I, I never went to church as a young boy. I, I didn't come from a Christian background at all. We were very working class. My dad was my dad and all my family were all involved in football and um, it was quite a tough upbringing. Um, I often joke that the closest I got to a Bible was chasing off the Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, when they come on our council estate. Um, and, um, you know, that was probably as close as I got then. And um, uh, just to show you how raw it was. And um, but I always felt God's presence, Howard, you know, Since and I, when? 
since I was probably six, seven years old. That's interesting. I used to write poems about yeah. God and my mum and dad was, would say to me, wow, isn't that lovely, you know? We don't really know where that's coming from. But they, they didn't yeah. discourage me. They, they thought it was sweet. Yeah. You know, they thought it was sweet. But I always felt his presence. And when I signed for Newcastle United, I did a, I remember doing a couple of live radio interviews on the local uh, radios up there. And I mentioned God. And uh, they looked at me like I was... An wow, alien. An alien, yeah. you know. <laughs> and I got the nickname of, you know, the, some of the boys picked up on it and they used to call me Holy Joe. Yeah. But I hadn't read the Bible mm. at this stage, Howard. I was talking about God, but never, I didn't know the gospel. Oh, goodness. Had no idea. What sort idea. of things were you saying then? I was just, I just felt God's presence. I just said, I think God, God is, I, I, I was talking to God all my life. I was always in relationship with him, talking with him. But, but I mean, you know, to be in a football club, I mean, you are, is probably one of the, 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 can I say, the worst places to even talk about yeah, God because they'll absolutely. think you're a holy Joe and there's that, a lot whatever. of banter and yeah. things that go on there that are swearing and stuff like that. So I, that, I think it helped the fact that I wasn't, I, wasn't in, I wasn't going to church because for me it was just a personal relationship. I didn't think anything of it. It was so the natural. Innocent. innocent. Wow. Yeah, so innocent. Yeah. And so I would talk about him and... And, um, and people would, you know, people would, there were people that would mock. And I remember one, one situation. Um, I remember on a Monday, the manager, this was at Reading. I'd left Newcastle, went to Reading. I had a couple of years at Reading. And the manager at the time called me and he said, he pulled me in his office and he said, look, he said, um, it, and he was calling me Holy Joe, by the way, mm -hmm. the manager. Um, in training, you know, just having a crack. Would he do say that in front of yeah, everybody Yeah, he would, well? he would, he would. And, mm. um, and then he, he pulled me in one day and he said, look, you're not putting your foot in. What's the matter with you? What, you know, liven yourself up. Um, and he was talking to me as if it was almost, a, my faith was affecting my performance. And that mm. because I was a Christian, mm -hmm. I wasn't tough enough in games, which, which, I, in, which I knew was total rubbish. Um, and it did affect me a little bit because as a football player, you're, you're a part of a team. And you don't want to be seen as the weak link, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and um, it affected me, to be honest with you, for a while. And then obviously I was transferred from Reading to a Dutch football club. I spent eight years in Holland and uh, there was absolutely no churches in Holland. You know, just nowhere to fellowship. Really? I didn't know yeah, that. So, okay. I, so it was... So, uh, yeah. so devoid of any sort of spiritual input or, or influence around you to actually even talk to somebody. So what was the difference then, you know, when you were with in Brazil? Because I, I know there's a, a lot of people there mm. who believe in God and they're quite open about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was an amazing experience, Howard, because in Brazil, I was able to express how I felt openly, more openly, and rather it being seen as a weakness, I felt empowered as a Christian and I felt the the strength of having God's favor on my life whereas I'd been mocked in England mm -hmm. but I was being empowered in Brazil mm. people were um, you know they were really keen to to hear my thoughts and it was at that stage really that I really delved into the life of Jesus Christ mm. um, but then when you actually were in Brazil, uh, you probably saw there was a, a, lo a lot more sort of talk about your faith amongst the teammates as well. Because we know, you Absolutely. know, Kaka, for example, exactly. people like that. Yeah. Uh, is, is Neymar a Christian as well? Well, Neymar confesses, yeah, he confesses um, Jesus Christ after games. It's so many players. I mean... David Luiz as well. David you know? Luiz. The, the, I mean, I think there was, you know, 11 born-again Christians in the World Cup finding winning team. Really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. How you know, the goal, right from the, you know, and even the coaching staff. And I had, the, I had the privilege of being in some of the changing rooms before games mm -hmm. where the lads would pray together. And it's so powerful. Wow. Yeah. You know, when you're, when you're going on... I've seen David Luiz uh, actually pray when he was with Chelsea for somebody else before the game. Absolutely. And, and, and yeah. not be afraid to do that. Well, the boys are bringing a Louis, Louis Vuitton, you know, toilet bag. Some of the boys, the non-believers. Whereas the players, the Christians, were bringing their Bible under their arm. You know, yeah. And that's how David, David Lewis has actually changed the mentality at Chelsea when he was there because he'd come in at match day with the Bible. Yeah. Do you and, think that um, went down well with uh, some of the I think, hierarchy uh, in the football? Yeah, well, team? listen, I mean, you, we've, we've got to be bold, haven't we, as Christians? Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I love it when people of, um, people of, you know, prominence like David Lewis have the, the courage to, um, 
to you know to to, to expose people well, and take yeah. the lead. Yeah. But I mean, being a Brazilian, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me because mm. they. Tongue in cheek, they they say in Brazil that God is a Brazilian, you know, <laughs> because they believe His favor. I mean, they they say that with you know with obviously um, hand of God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, they call it the hand of God, don't they? And the, I yeah, did absolutely. I did it the other week because uh, it was uh, coming over the, and it was too far ahead, uh, yeah. and I was just by the goal, and I just put it in with my hand. You know, they <laughs> did a Maradona. They went, oh, there you go, yeah. hand of God. But yeah. they because they know. Once they know and got, get used to you that you ha are a person of faith, it, it's a bit difficult at the beginning um, with the Brits. But the greeting yeah. that, that they had for one another in Brazil was yeah. a little bit um, spiritual, wasn't it? Yeah, what, was it what was it? How did it well, go? Well, it, it was when you actually part. Mm -hmm. So um, the Brazilian men would part and they would say in Portuguese, fica com Deus, which means stay with God. Say it again. Um, fica com Deus. Okay, right. Stay with God. Oh, Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, we sort of fell out the habit of saying, God bless. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when I was a small boy, you'd hear, I'd hear my uncle or my granddad and my dad say, God bless, off at the end of a telephone conversation. We sort of lost that a little bit, haven't we? Mm. But in Brazil, all the players would say, Fica con Deus, Fica mm -hmm. con Deus. It was beautiful to hear. And um, it, was the, it was really in Brazil, you know, although I'd had a relationship with God through my football career, I'd made a lot of mistakes too. You know, and um, who hasn't? Yeah, I mean, I you know I made some poor choices, and uh, um, and I didn't really understand um, you know the 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 consequences, the worldly consequences. And I used to feel that God was angry with me as well because that, that was just a lack of understanding mm. I had. But that that was all changed when I when I uh, lived in Brazil, and I realised that. You know, the, the love and the grace and the forgiveness that God has for us is just overwhelming. Mm. And when you get a glimpse of the love that he has, which I, which I had in Brazil, it knocked me over. Mm -hmm. I remember explaining to somebody that for a period of time in Brazil, Howard, I was, um, I'd wake up in the morning like a child at Christmas. Do you know that feeling you used to get? The Before, yeah, 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 Christmas Eve. Yeah. You, you couldn't wake up quick I've enough. I lost it a bit. Yeah, <laughs> you're still there a little bit, you know. Yeah. But it was, I had that feeling for weeks after I gave my life. It was al almost like I was, I was overwhelmed by what he might do for me in that moment. You know, um, it was an incredible feeling and uh, I'll never forget. And I try and hold on to that now when I'm having little dips. I was just going to ask you, hmm. what has been some of the challenges that you've had as a Christian? And, you know, coming from the background you have of being, you know, top of your profession, a professional footballer, heart's desire filled and all of that. And yet you're human and we all mm. have these different things to overcome uh, the challenges. So what was been some of your greatest ones? Well, I think players fall into a lot of traps. You know, um, gambling is a big problem in football today, even more so because the players earn a lot more money. Um, but gambling was something that I was affected by um, women, you're young, you're a footballer, you know, um, not, not, not being faithful in a relationship. Um, coming from a tough background, it's about survival, you know, and, and you know, listen, you, le you learn some stuff morally, but having to deal with all of those things um, and, and then as you get older, looking back and feeling the guilt and the shame for all of that stuff, um, was amazing when I when I understood the grace of God, the grace of God mm. and the, the sacrifice that was made on the cross that, that allows me to leave mm. that behind mm. you know and, and it's just an amazing gift that he's given us. So in those moments where you perhaps been really low and devastated you realize what you've done um, what was the road back, well, you know, is there a sort of a testimony? Was there a scripture? Was there a word yeah. said to you or something yeah. that just sort of yeah. went, you know, that that was a eureka moment? Well, my eureka scripture is Romans six twenty three. you know, um, you know, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of gift of God, you know, it's everlasting so life. yeah, everlasting life through Jesus Christ mm -hmm. um, was something that uh, completely changed my life because I realized there were, there is a consequence to sin, mm -hmm. you know, but we can be forgiven through Christ. And that was life changing for me because at some at one stage I felt that, you know, how was I ever going to pay that off? Mm -hmm. How could I get rid of it? 
would I have to do 30 years of charity work? You know, because that was a real issue words, I had. Is it? It's not biblical, is it? Yeah, no. You know. We're saved by grace. We're saved by grace, yeah. <clears throat> Some of the other things, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the fact that you were working as an agent, a football agent. Yeah. So you, you were able to discover new talent. And I know there's one in particular. I'll let you tell the story, though. Go on. Yeah, I mean, that was, I had its challenges as well, though, Howard, because working as an agent um, in uh, England, um, players looked to agents of, they looked like, you know, they, they, they're going to get some sort of power from the agent, someone who's going to be a strong negotiator, someone who's prepared to, you know, tip tables up to get contracts done. And when some of the players realised I had a face, they left because they didn't feel I was capable of doing a, a proper a job, deal, yeah. a big deal. Because and you'd be too soft. Exactly. Yeah. Which, 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 again, the Brazil experience turned that on its head because obviously as a Christian, we are empowered to go and do anything that we, you know, we desire in, in, for his glory. So, um, but it was hard because the mentality here is different, is, is different and it's still changing. And a lot of young players still don't identify that empowerment. They see it more as a weakness. So I lost players because of my faith. Um, so I had to be wise how I discussed it with them. But when you're a Christian and, and you, you love Jesus, you mm. want to talk about it. Of you want course, to tell everybody yeah. and you don't want to keep it yeah. to yourself, you know. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you can't uh, stop yourself uh, no, sometimes exactly. sharing and that. Exactly. And I'm so full of the love of, of, of Christ that... It was something that I found so difficult to hold back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I lost them, I lost them. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, were, there were occasions where players did hear um, and they, they, they would want to talk and ask questions. So, you know, I, I'm sure I've planted lots of seeds, never always saw the, the fruit, but I've planted seeds along the way. And hopefully some of the boys will remember that later on in life. And, mm -hmm. You know, but Shay Adams is a good example. That I think that was yeah, maybe the one. That, yeah, well, she, well, Shay was someone that um, picked up a non-league football club at Ilkeston. Um, he was on about thirty pound a week at Ilkeston playing non-league a team in Derbyshire, and uh, I watched him play three or four night, three or four games, um, and um, I, I thought he had everything as a young player, and um, managed to get him into professional football. He signed for Sheffield United and got into their first team. And uh, like a lot of experience I've had, as soon as they start getting um, some fame and, uh, you know, the, the, the attention of the media, um, that's when the sharks Come out. swim, <laughs> you know, and unfortunately, like a lot of them. Talking I, I, other agents now. Yeah, mm. other agents were coming. It's a very, it's a very cutthroat, uh, yeah. cutthroat business, Howard. It's like the Wild West now. Yeah. And, um, and I lost him. You know, he was, he was talked into going with somebody else and within maybe three or four months of them taking Shea, he went for, I think, £16 million pound to Southampton, which, you know, was a, an amazing move Would have been him. a big ticket. Yeah, it would have been a, a massive ticket, yeah. especially when, you But you know, you know Lee, yeah, I've got yeah. to say, just to encourage you, because, mm. you know, Jesus said, you know, he who, you know, sort of talks about him in front of others uh, will actually be he talked about between mm. Jesus and yeah. the Father, you yeah. know, so you know, that way your, your reward might not be now, it would be in the future, yeah. uh, but certainly, you know, the, the football game is probably just like many other sort of uh, media, uh, like take, for example, the music industry or the film industry, yeah. agents come in and there's a lot of skullduggery goes on Absolutely. behind the scenes. Absolutely, you know that, you know, yeah. yeah. But what are you doing now? So it's wonderful, you know, God, God's incredible. He's, he's been, he's been a, an amazing father and um, yeah, I've had my struggles, but I think what God does, he turns your, he can turn your shame into success. Mm. And that's what he's done for me, you know. Now you've got um, other things that you perhaps want to do as well. And we, you know, we, we only met just a few weeks ago, but uh, some of the, obviously the common denominator football uh, and you hadn't played for a while have you you know so and then I got you into a game didn't I you did I yeah. know well two games actually yeah. we go somewhat what went from one game to the other didn't we <laughs> I must like you Howard because to tell you what you to talk me to playing football again not because <laughs> yeah. I love the game but mm. I know the damage it does mm. it can do because I've, the I had, knees yeah, and I had yeah. eight operations on my knees towards the end of my goodness. career oh, so I've got no cartilage in my knees mm. so if I if I 
do too much on them, they, they will hurt. They, yeah, yeah. they swell and they did but it was still for that 20 minutes i felt it again yeah. you know, i felt that little buzz yeah oh, good. and um i mean i mean i must say and i i mean i and I, I must say how i mean you know revelation tv was was a channel that i used to watch a few years ago when i was actually going through a little bit of a you know a little bit of a dip and i got so much inspiration from the program and the the tv show um, wow, and, you just uh, never know who's so watching. Just, and then there we are playing together. Yeah. Yes, yes, why don't we look at some of your football videos, Howard? They're so inspiring. Good save, keeper. This is Howard when he was 70 years old, practicing shooting on goal. It's really inspirational to see the dedication that Howard has, you know, the work he puts in. That's probably why he scores so many goals in the games when he plays, you know. In his age group, he's quite a phenomenal goal scorer. And you can see he's really working the goalkeeper here. Terrific finish with his right foot, punishing the goalkeeper to be honest. And that's a tremendous finish. Again, showing good feet, good agility. Chips the goalkeeper, very impressive. Scores a lot of goals in the six yard box. Inspirational for young players, you know, sometimes just get a goalkeeper, get a few balls, get yourself out on the pitch and just practice. Really good to see. That's really good technique that, as you can see, knocked it in the top corner. So after an hour of practicing shooting on goal, Howard is now going to play a game with his mates. He's ready to go. There's just no stopping him. I don't know where he gets the energy from. Here, this is an England over 60s trial game. And what about that for a finish on his right foot? Very relaxed, sticks it in the top bin. Very impressive. Very relaxed, very confident in front of goal. So, as you've seen with the clips, there's some real dexterity there from Howard. 73 years old, good movement, good energy levels, great feet, he knows how to score a goal. All in all, very impressive. Didn't he do well, eh? Amazing, you know. So, I, 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 uh, I, ho I hold this, you know, this show and this television uh, very close to my heart. Oh, that's really good. That's, that's good for us to know because, you know, sometimes you think, well, is are we what we're doing? Is it a waste of time? Could we be doing something else? But you know, having testimonies of people that watch the channel and and, oh. and they're being fed, and especially at the time of greatest need, and that's really I was, good that yeah, we're was, there for no, you. No, I was I was going through a very difficult period, and um, Revelation TV, uh, you know. Uh, I was sitting on my own in my, probably in Yorkshire somewhere at, at the time. And I, it would be something that I do on a daily basis. I'd tune in and I used to get inspiration. Just listen to God's word and the conversations you were having with some of your guests. So it really does make an impact. And you, you know, um, and I know there's a lot of young men um, struggling. I've lost a couple of really close friends to suicide. You know, and mm, and I felt that they they probably went down that route because they they felt that there was nothing else out there for them, mm. but there is. You know, there is. There's but a loving God out there. You know. Do you know, that's one thing that I can relate to, and I try to um, have an open door to help people to come through it because uh, I struggle as well with those things. So, Absolutely, you know, I can yeah. empathize with them, and, but I so want to be able to reach out more to people who are depressed and who yeah. are thinking that this life has got nothing to offer. I mean, in general terms, that this life hasn't got a lot to offer, but what yeah. God has in store for us, mm. especially when 
uh, Jesus comes back and we've got the exactly. new heaven, new earth. But we've got to get through to then and we've got to he help each other. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so if yeah. Revelation TV could be something that you will benefit you like it has to lead, then please do uh, stick with us and, and uh, give us a try because we, we do have a heart uh, to reach others and to continue to be able to help you to you know, make, make it through this life. Uh, that's all we need to do. We're hanging on together. Well, is there anything else you want to share? But we, uh, otherwise, I think, you know, this has been a really good interview and uh, getting to know you, Mr. Lee Payne. No, no. You know? It, God's brought me through so much, so many trials and tribulations. And I feel that now, um, really, really, really quickly, I remember going to Malta for a few days. I wanted to follow Paul's footsteps because we know he was shipwrecked just off the island of Malta. And um, I wandered into a church one evening and uh, just I, I, I actually sat near the front in the end because the, the usher took me to the front. I wanted to sit at the back. It was just a random church. It was an evangelical church. And uh, I just wanted a night of worship. And I, went, I was there as a tourist. And um, the pastor stood up and said, I've got a word for somebody tonight. He said, I don't know where it's come from, but I'm being obedient because it's going to sound really strange. But he said, there's someone here tonight that needs to stop chasing footballs and start chasing souls. Oh my goodness. And this went down my, you know, this thing went down my spine. I think, oh no, he's talking to me. He's got to be talking to me. And you know, he walked past, he walked where I was sitting, he walked past and he said, that was for you. Mm. And I was, you know, I was a tourist. I hadn't even, mm. nobody knew who I was. Incredible word from God. So... I know that he's going to use the, 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 some of the trials and tribulations I've had, my career as a footballer, and, and, and now the faith that I have. I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a, you know, a calling on my life to do something positive yeah. for his glory. Amen to that. Well, if we can help you in any way at Revelation TV to accomplish that, yeah, that would be a great job that'd done. That would be so wonderful, Howard. Bless you, Lee. Yeah, bless you. All right, I just want to say to you all at home, thank you for watching this particular interview. Uh, do pray for Lee, because there's lots more that God can do in his life as well as yours. Yeah.